Buckle up, everyone. You are strapped in and ready for the Insurance Hour with me, your host, Carl Sussman, informing, educating, and entertaining Californians one policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. Hello, hello. This is Carl Sussman, host of Insurance Hour. Thanks for being here again. Remember, you can reach me anytime at 559-656-0317 or send your questions to questions at insurancehour.com. Or if you need assistance right now, don't forget you can also just dial pound 250 on your cell phone and use the keyword insurance and you'll get through to somebody right away. Today, we have a very, very special guest that I would like to introduce to you. Her name is Valkyrie Holmes, and she is the founder slash co-founder slash everything, as far as I'm concerned, for a new company called Fora. And I want her to tell you about Fora and what it is that she sees her vision for it being. And let me just start out by introducing her. Welcome. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Carl. Great to be here. Absolutely. I, I stumbled upon your company and I want you to tell me your vision for it, what it does, and, and how you see this as being something that can help people in the insurance industry and consumers alike. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, so as a general debrief, Fora uses climate and property risk analytics to help insurance companies, agencies, and everyone under the sun, plus homeowners, uh, reduce their natural disaster risk. And I initially started in this industry from a data science perspective. I was working for a lot of space tech companies and then pivoted into sustainability within the nonprofit sphere and just saw that there was a lot of different stakeholders taking place in this whole natural disaster uh, kind of sphere. And the only way for us to achieve the best solution possible is to align as many stakeholders as we possibly can. And that kind of led me into the insurance landscape where now we're helping insurance companies improve their underwriting to uh, get more homeowners, better policies, and assess their risk, while also incentivizing risk reduction. Uh, we're helping agencies close more deals and provide better uh, support for their for their clients. And now we're kind of just getting into general real estate, uh, helping uh, real estate professionals assess their risk and assess how they can reduce the risk and uh, improve uh, the quality of life for, for a lot of homeowners in the state. So uh, excited for, for what this can be and kind of the whole whole sphere around it. It sounds like everybody can benefit from it. So let's start from the beginning. Uh, people will go to the website, fora.us, and we'll put links to all of this stuff so it's easy for people to find. And tell us what it is that they will do, what, what it is they'll be doing and what the outcome is from the consumer end. Yeah. So from the consumer end, we essentially have a lot of tools that are geared towards homeowners. So right now we have a wildfire tool and a wind related tool, so hurricane tornado convective storm uh, for homeowners where you can go onto our website and you can click the take the assessment button and it takes you to a suite of tools that help walk you through your property and assess your most potent risk factors. So you as the homeowner would step outside, you would have some kind of smart device, usually a phone or a tablet of some sorts, and you would take pictures and videos of your home's risk factors that we can then analyze to give you a resilience score. So a lot of that has to do with uh, kind of historical models based off of predictive analytics, but also what we've seen from people like IBHS and CAL FIRE standards that factor into how likely this home is to survive. Uh, we kind of base it off of, you know, we know which properties are going to be hit by a natural disaster. Now we need to assess their actual resilience to those natural disasters from a structure science perspective, from material science perspective, uh, all of the above. But the main goal there is to make it easily digestible for the homeowner uh, and whoever, whatever consumer is kind of using that uh, and then giving them action items at the end of their assessment to help them reduce their risk and get access to products and services that might benefit them in the long run. So they're going to go to the they're going to go to the website. They don't have to download an app. They'll they'll go to the or will they? No app. Okay, so they go to the site no, no app. and they're going to basically be walked through a process to assess their home's potential exposure for let's just say wildfire. So what's yeah. it going to actually have them do with that with when they have that on the screen? Yeah, so we basically just collect uh, pretty baseline information, just name and address typically. And then from there, the assessment starts and we walk them through a couple different elements of the home. So typically we start with the roof and we ask questions regarding if there's any debris on the roof, what the actual roof is made of, uh, how likely it's been replaced and things like that. And all of that is segmented into these questions that give us a resilience score that tie into the overall score at the end. So you as the homeowner, answer the question and then supplement that with picture and video evidence 
that then is just digested into that question and we move on to the next one. Um, so we have roof questions, we have foundation related, vegetation related, and then siding related are usually the, the typical uh, set of barriers that we, that we choose to go with. And then, yeah, and then at the end, all of those pictures and videos are put into a report uh, along with the score and action items to help reduce your risk. So consumers will take this, they'll input information and that they're prompted for, and they'll actually take pictures and or video. What happens if they say the roof looks great and they send you and the picture they submit, the roof doesn't look so great. Does the system say something or how does it work with that, uh, with that conflict? Yeah, so if we see that either they're taking a picture that's not represented for their house specifically, uh, all, everything is geofenced in, so we understand where they're taking the picture, if it's in line with the address that they initially input. Um, and so if it's not something of their home or if it's something that's misrepresenting some information, it automatically gets flagged in our system, and then we go in and manually review it. Uh, so a lot of that has to do with just understanding what the material is uh, and general vegetation in relation to the home. Uh, and we're increasing the amount of automation that we that we have in our tools every day. So the consumer's walking around with their phone, they're taking pictures, they're taking videos of the outside of the home, uh, presumably, and they're answering questions. So where does this data go? Is this going to into, into a, an AI generating uh, that's reviewing it? Is it going to a person, a little bit of both? What, what happens on your end? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. Uh, so we're trying to automate a lot more of the like, camera functions within the assessment. Uh, right now, it's kind of just focused on roof characteristics and then some siding and vegetation characteristics. Uh, but yeah, once that goes through, again, if there's anything flagged, we manually review it. Uh, and then we also have someone that is kind of usually on the company side checking everything to make sure it's all polished and the report is secure uh, and sent to the user. If it's just consumer data, that's all just kind of like an educational tool that we provide. Uh, and it's less extensive. It's We don't have a lot of the camera functions that we typically do when we're working with the company, uh, just because it's a little bit redundant <laughs> for the homeowner to get all that information and actually have all those pieces together. Uh, but yeah, so it's a combination of, of both. Okay. So then are they able to get the recommendations immediately or is it submitted and then there's a time they'll get an email perhaps that says, okay, we've reviewed everything and here's what we see, here's what we recommend. How does that work? Yeah. So typically we have a lot of our recommendations uh, inputted automatically just based off of their answers. And then we can go back through and adjust uh, based on priority. If the company, if the insurance company or the agency has specific qualifications or they want to ask follow-up questions, gather more information. Uh, so it's pretty customizable, but a lot of our action items come pretty much automatically from the questions that they answer. Um, we're basically assuming that if they know they need help in this area and they're, and they're answering truthfully, these are the things that they can do to help reduce an insurance premium or get a discount or qualify for insurance in a lot of the cases, uh, especially in California now. Uh, so yeah, the, all of the action items are vetted. Okay, so it's as far as the immediate action items, it's garbage in, garbage out, right? If they say everything looks yeah. great, I have nothing near the house, the, ho the roof's brand new, and they answer all those things, then they're not going to get an accurate assessment and they're not going to get the proper recommendation. So it's sort of, yeah. you know, you're not, you're not fooling anybody because it's followed up with photos. So at some point they're going to get an accurate assessment, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Okay, now you mentioned insurance companies or agencies or things of that nature. So I can see from a consumer standpoint how this would be a great tool for getting anything else, right? This is going to help me understand some things that I might be able to do to make my house less likely to burn if we're using the wildfire example. Insurance aside, that's the goal, right? We don't want our home yeah. to burn. So I can see getting immediate feedback or in a day if it has to be reviewed, whatever the case might be, being very powerful. Tell me how you're utilizing, how other uh, organizations like an insurance company or an insurance agency might utilize this tool as well. Yeah, yeah. So from the insurance standpoint, there's a couple different things that we've been working with uh, with our clients. Majority, either validation, uh, which that would basically just be an extra layer of protection during the underwriting process. So a policy comes in that's in that kind of gray area of what they can and can't insure, they need more information they ping us and we send a digital assessment to the homeowner to complete or if the agent, if the agent is the one handling the policy. Uh, and that's kind of used as a validation uh, technique for a lot of these underwriting teams. 
And then we also have one that's basically on a sliding scale for discounts. So if they get a policy that's in that high risk area that they think they can insure, how high is that premium going to be? Uh, how how likely is the homeowner to reduce their risk? Uh, and by completing that assessment, we're already showcasing that the homeowner is willing to take extra steps and basically streamlining the process of, of them to do that work within a given timeline. Uh, the timeline is typically set from the insurance company. So you're already partnering with insurance companies that are saying, hey, we're looking to write insurance in an area, but perhaps we want more details, we want more specifics, and they'll reach out to you and then you connect with the customer. Are there any companies that you're, uh, is this proprietary? Are you allowed to say which carriers are, are using this information or? Uh, a lot of it is proprietary. The one that we can say is a uh, Hawaiian uh, hurricane group. They're uh, basically a Hawaii based uh, insurance company that we just rolled out with not too long ago. Um, and it's been great. Uh, I really enjoy and I like the Hawaii atmosphere. They obviously have a renewed interest in uh, natural disaster risk. So yeah, that's just getting started, but we're, we're really excited. Right, so the insurance carriers are using your tool to be able to better assess the risk. And based on that information, they're able to make an underwriting decision on eligibility or on price or whatever they decide they wanna utilize it for. Mm -hmm. And you're, right now it's for, you said, um, wind and wildfire. Are there other things that you're planning on building into it or are there more recommendations that you might be looking to put in or referrals to how to correct some of these problems, anything like that? Yeah, no, definitely. The, the next kind of product on our, on our roadmap is a flood related risk tool. Uh, we've gotten a lot of um, just interest in, in that side of disasters. And now as we're moving into the East Coast, uh, that's definitely more of a related peril. Um, so yeah, definitely flood is the next thing. And then apart from that, a lot of it is just updates to uh, our automation, uh, updates to the platform, making it easier to assign agents to things and maybe giving agents uh, more authority over these policies. Uh, and kind of what they can use to incentivize homeowners. Uh, but a lot of it from the homeowner perspective is stuff that we've tested over the last year or so. We did a paid pilot back in the summer with over a thousand homeowners in this one uh, in this one neighborhood. And we we really think that the homeowner element is the biggest piece that will always continue to to improve. That makes sense. Now, I know there's go there's a big question that everyone's going to ask, and we're going to talk about it right after the break, and that's privacy, is what happens with our data, right? Where is it stored? Who gets to see it? And we'll talk about that as soon as we come back. Master the California insurance marketplace with Sussman Insurance Agency. Two generations of insight make us your ideal ally. Call 877-411-5200 or visit sussmaninsurance.com for information on your insurance policies now. Hello, hello, and welcome back. I'm Carl Sussman, your host of Insurance Hour. Thanks again for being here. Before the break, we were talking about a new product that's available to help homeowners and insurance companies. And when do you ever see those two things happen at the same time? We're talking with Valkyrie Holmes, whose new product, Farah.us, is doing just that. And before the break, we were talking about what happens when the homeowner, for in this example, walks around their house, answers these questions, takes these pictures. What type of privacy tools do you have in place? Where does that data go? Who gets to see it and how is it stored? Yeah, no, absolutely. That was one of the main uh, kind of concerns for us in the beginning when we were building this product is making sure that all that data is proprietary, it's handled correctly, the right people are seeing it, uh, things like that. So uh, in terms of the data that's collected from the consumer facing tool, we don't save any of that data. That's strictly for the homeowner. They can download a checklist, but we're not hosting that on our end, uh, usually unless there's some kind of company attached to it. And then if there's a company attached, uh, whether that be an agency or an insurance company or some other kind of uh, area of, of the company, uh, the data gets basically saved in their company account. So the company is the only one that has access to that data, them and us. Uh, we don't sell any third party data. It's all just information that we give to the insurance company that we can then test and basically make the product better for that specific company without giving any more, uh, any proprietary information away, basically. 
Makes sense. And as far as cost goes, I know that a lot of insurance companies are, are working with, I say, free tools. Nothing's really free, right? But tools like Google Satellite View, Google Street View, things like that to try and just get some images. And tell me how your process is significantly better than just going online and grabbing you know, a satellite shot or a street view. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, I think it's worth mentioning that a lot of climate models today use primarily just aerial mapping and satellite imaging. And you can get a lot from those from those images uh, and get a lot of really interesting kind of tips on defensible space and uh, protection of the property and things like that. But what you can't get is things under the roof, uh, things on the side of the house. You can get a little bit more of a glimpse on that on Google Street View, but you're not going to get things in the backyard, for example. So there's all of these kind of key elements of the home within the foundation, within the siding that are really crucial in assessing whether or not it's going to burn down or whether or not it's going to fly away in a hurricane. Um, and a lot of that has to do with vegetation. Uh, a lot of it has to do with ventilation. That's something that a lot of people forget about, specifically with wildfire. Um, and so basically by us getting some kind of digital assessment from the homeowner, by them walking around their property, they have direct access to the property. There's no more in-person inspectors coming on at a random time to collect all that information. Um, we are not only educating the homeowner on what they can do to reduce their risk and kind of providing more of a stickier product for insurance companies and agencies, uh, but also just getting way more information in way less time uh, than you would typically get with what exists today. Plus, I would assume we're looking at the most current data, right? We never know exactly, exactly how yeah. long and what might have changed since that photograph might have been taken from the satellite or when the street view yeah. was there. And while the dates are there, they're not as current as the homeowner doing it right now, obviously. So exactly. you're, you're getting yeah. better information. So do you see this as being something that insurance carriers are going to want to embrace and utilize on a more granular level based on the feedback that you're getting? Or do you see this as being, because I have to be I have to be cynical these days, right? Or do you see this as being sort of an excuse that, oh, well, every little thing has to be 100% perfect or, or the risk is a no-go. So are you, do you see yourself, it's a loaded question, I guess. Are you seeing <laughs> yourself as being able to help consumers or help insurance carriers not help certain consumers? Yeah, I mean, there's so many elements of this question. I feel like I could like do a whole episode just on this give it, question. Give it all um, to me. <laughs> but I think in insurance, we're seeing more of a uh, shift towards hyper-personalization and the customer experience. And a lot of that involves being a lot more granular, um, making sure that there's more human interaction or if there isn't any human act interaction, uh, more customization on the homeowner front or just the policyholder front in general. And with that comes a lot more responsibility on how we're incentivizing homeowners to reduce their risk and what homeowners we're actually choosing to insure and how we keep those homeowners on our books. Uh, so I think in terms of us getting more granular with this information and providing more of that unique customer experience, which doesn't take too much time out of everyone's day, it's pretty automated on its own, um, that provides way more of a, way more of a value add uh, than just your typical you put in a quote, you get contacted by an agent, and then you get the policy and you're done. Um, so a lot more of it is becoming personalized. Uh, so I think that's definitely something. In terms of insurance companies using it as kind of an excuse, I think because the market is so hard right now and insurance companies are already pulling out of these areas that they can't insure, even if traditional carriers aren't going to insure those area areas, non-admitted carriers are going to come in state insurance companies are going to come in. And the more of that book is taken up by people that are willing to take more specialty risk on, the more traditional insurance companies are going to say, oh, okay, we're losing a good portion of this market. How do we personalize? How do we differentiate from these other companies? Uh, I think something that I've seen from outside of the insurance space and then coming in, recognizing it, is that a lot of people kind of just fall into insurance. Like insurance kind of underlies everything we do. Uh, and that means that there's a lot of opportunities for improvement, a lot of areas of expertise that people can utilize to make things better for specific niches of people. And the state farms in all states of the world uh, are going to have to continue to innovate and improve. That's why they are the top of the top, right? Like they continuously innovate. They have innovation departments, you know, they have people dedicated to improving the experience of their policyholders. Uh, so I think this is just one element in that. 
It's just one more tool in the tool chest. I hear you. Well, something you mentioned also, I know, is a big, uh, it's a sticking point for consumers is having inspectors show up. I, I can't tell you how many times we'll get a call from a client that says, who are these people? You know, nobody said they were coming and what <laughs> yeah. are they doing? And, and, and you know, truthfully, there, ha there have been some legitimate bad experiences where adjuster, adjusters, where inspectors will sometimes literally show up and start looking in windows and taking pictures and doing things they really, really should not be doing. So I yeah. think that if, if just at the most basic fundamental level, any type and any time an insurance company has a need for an inspection, they can do some form of self inspection, right? Whether it's with your tool or something that augments your tool or, or works with it, I think that's going to be a better overall customer experience. Like you said, it's it's all it's all about the customer. It's all about making yourself stand out and be better than the other guy. And as far as the hard market goes, you're absolutely right. The areas that people are not able to obtain insurance in have a real potential to be able to be more insurable if you're able to look at a house by house by house basis versus saying, mm -hmm. well, this whole part of the city or this whole zip code or everything north of this street is not good. Because as they're finding, there are, there are actuaries that can say that these things, things that you've mentioned already that are being, that differentiate homes do have an impact on whether they're going to burn if there's a wildfire. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I think We've seen that with life insurance and auto insurance where now, you know, with things like root insurance, they have a little device or a little app that can track your mileage and be able to price based off of how safe you drive and reward you for driving safer. And for the longest time in property insurance, there really hasn't been that level of variability because properties don't change very much year over year. Uh, but now, as we're seeing the climate changing um, and now with disasters becoming more prevalent, there's an opportunity to help people enhance the protection on their property and give them tangible value. That's probably the biggest thing that I saw when I was working in the nonprofit space was there's all these programs that exist uh, for people to get certificates for making their home safer that they can show to their insurance company. But there's nothing that directly within the policy embeds the insurance company to the homeowner and says, hey, if you do this thing, we'll reduce your premium by X percent or we'll incentivize you to do this by giving you a free smart device or, you know, whatever, whatever it might be. But I, I think we talked about this before, uh, kind of the idea of likening it to solar panels where people, 25% of people are buying solar panels because they're more environmentally beneficial, but the overwhelming 65 plus percent of people are buying solar panels because they see the tangible benefit reflected in their energy bill. So it's all about how do we align these stakeholders? Uh, like I kind of touched on in the beginning, how do we align more people to, provide them with that value up front. How are you dealing with the issues of departments of insurance since every state has their own and some decide, not some, and they decide in a great part what guidelines and what types of factors an insurance company can look at? How are you dealing with potentially a state where the department of insurance says that's too much information or we don't want you looking at that? Is there some, what, what is your general response when you're getting pushback, if you're getting any? Yeah, I mean, we we typically haven't gotten any pushback yet. I will say yet because <laughs> um, it's all very, uh, you know, it's very variable, but I, I think we've purposely made the tool very customizable for that reason, because we know insurance changes all the time. Insurance is one of the most data-driven industries in the world. It's probably like the first truly data-driven industry um, that has existed for as long as it has. And in that we know things change all the time and we need to be able to adapt to that. Uh, so we have the ability to remove questions, change questions, change what information we gather, who sees that information, um, et cetera, all kind of built into whichever company we're, we're servicing in whichever state. Um, so, yeah, I think the ability to be flexible is key, uh, especially with legislation, because um, everything can change overnight. <laughs> so. Right. Between the between what the state legislates and what the Department of Insurance wants and yeah. what comes out is something completely different. And every state yeah. has their own variation of that. So, right. Being able to be nimble and adjust to what those guidelines are, I think, will also be critical to your to the growth in the future. So mm -hmm. I, I think there's no question that this is a benefit for everybody. Right. This is a benefit because it's going to help consumers make their homes safer and it's going to give insurance carriers another avenue to look at to see how they can differentiate and price differently one house 
next door to another house that, that has different characteristics, even though they're literally next door to each other. So what would be your final thought if you're trying to explain the, the benefit to someone who, let's just say for right now, doesn't have the ability to get a discount and they're not specifically getting an insurance company's acceptance based just on this, what would you say to them to tell them that they should still be using this tool? Yeah, I mean, the first step in in protection is education. Uh, and so by understanding more about your property, even if there isn't value attached to it yet, you can kind of expect that there will be some kind of tangible value uh, attached to it in the future, and you will be rewarded for that value. Um, so the point of using the tool, the, what we always say to just general consumers that come to our site is, you know, this is helping protect your most valuable asset and your loved ones and you and your business. And uh, in a lot of cases, those are the things that you know, make life worth living. Uh, and so I know from, from my perspective, I'm not a homeowner yet, but everyone that I know is basically a homeowner. Uh, so protecting that, uh, especially in areas that you know are high risk, it's less of a, it's less of a, oh, it's never going to happen to me kind of uh, period and more right. of when is it going to happen to me, right? So right. It's, it's a really important time. Helping consumers protect their most, their, which is typically their largest asset. That's really what it comes down to. And you're right. And the loved ones and everything else that goes with the house. Because the best claim, again, is not to have a claim. Valkyrie, thank you so much for being here today. This has been incredibly interesting. And I, and I look forward to seeing the company grow and seeing you on more platforms. And I will put a link in the show notes for anyone that would like to try uh, to, to, to get an assessment. Because everybody really should. And again, I, I thank you for being here. No, thank you so much. It was so much fun. I do want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen today. I know insurance is not necessarily the most sexy concept. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It is important that you understand what it is you're getting, what you should be looking for, red flags, you name it. You just need to know more than you used to. Things are more complicated than they used to be. If you have any questions, please reach out to me directly. You can email your questions to questions at insurancehour.com or call and leave a voicemail at 559 559- 656-0317. Educating and entertaining Californians one insurance policy at a time. This is Insurance Hour. This show is dedicated to Shamrock Papa.